So we've now embarked on the study of root diagrams for adjoint representations of compact semi-simple groups and their Lie algebras. And we've noticed that many of the nice features we observed for SL2 and SL3C, or SU2 and SU3, carry over to this more general setting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a root system which is supposed to abstract all these properties in a sort of nice system of axioms. So a root system is a collection R of vectors in Euclidean space such that a bunch of axioms will hold. And so these axioms can all be verified for the root diagrams of compact semi-simple Lie groups. We've already verified some of them um, and the rest we can verify quite easily now. And from these axioms we can actually deduce a classification theorem for root systems which will then translate into a classification theorem for these Lie algebras. So what are these properties, these nice axioms? First, uh, if alpha is a root, alpha is in R, then minus alpha is also in R. We've seen that holds for root diagrams of compact semi-simple groups. Two, let's write P alpha for the orthogonal projection from Rn to the line through alpha. So let me draw the line through alpha. So if this is alpha here, this is the line through alpha. Let's call it lambda alpha. Well then, P alpha of another root beta is a half N beta alpha times alpha for some integer n beta alpha. So in this example, let's see what we get. If I just orthogonally project this root up here onto this line, I end up halfway along from the origin to alpha. So in this case, n beta alpha would be one. This is a half alpha. Similarly, if I project any of these guys down to here, I'm going to get a half alpha. Third, um, the reflection in the hyperplane orthogonal to the line L alpha um, preserves R. It's a symmetry of the root system. Uh, so in this picture, let's draw it in red. Um, you know, lambda alpha is this line. So the hyperplane I'm talking about is this red one. So reflection in that red hyperplane should preserve the root system. And indeed, that is a symmetry of this hexagon. Similarly for uh, this vertical L beta, then you know the orthogonal to that will be this horizontal line, and you know the hexagon is symmetric under that, and it's also symmetric under this one. So this was this, this collection of symmetries we called the vial group action uh, when we discussed it in this example. So this gives us what's called the vial group of R. It's just the group of symmetries generated by these reflections. So this third thing is actually quite easy to see because we have for every alpha um, a subalgebra isomorphic to SL2C. And we know that SL2C representations are symmetric about the origin. And that's going to tell us exactly that we have this vial symmetry around each of these hyperplanes. So this just follows from the existence of 
the subalgebra S alpha isomorphic to SL2C that we've been discussing in the last couple of videos. Finally, um, the only roots on L alpha, on the line through alpha, are plus or minus alpha. And that's certainly true in this uh, example of SL2C, SL3C, sorry. Every line just contains alpha and minus alpha and nothing else, um, apart from the origin. That's not a root. So the goal for this video is to verify two, this um, projection being a half integer multiple of alpha, and then to verify four, and then we'll be able to go on and just work with root systems satisfying this set of axioms and classify them. So to see where two is coming from, we have to understand what this integer is. Well, this integer is going to be a weight, right? Those are really the only integers we have in Lie theory, weights of SL2C representations. And it's gonna be this SL2C coming from uh, the root alpha. So here we go. To understand two, Uh, little g is a representation of S alpha, this uh, SL2C subalgebra, spanned by H alpha, X and Y. So X is something in G alpha, Y is something in G minus alpha, and H alpha was two alpha sharp over k alpha alpha and this is really k dual if i if i miss a dual off my killing form please forgive me um in fact i'm just going to intentionally miss it off everywhere so what is the weight decomposition of g with respect to this action Well, if Z is in G beta, so it's a weight space, uh, as in a root space um, for the action, the adjoint action of little g, then add H alpha of Z equals beta of H alpha Z. That's what it means to be a root vector with root beta. So that tells us that Z has weight beta of H alpha in the S alpha representation G. Right, if we think of little g as a representation of SL2C via S alpha, then Z has a weight beta of H alpha, and by what we know about SL2C representations, this is an integer. Right, the weights of SL2C representations are integers. Now, what is beta H alpha? Well, by definition of the killing form and the sharp isomorphism and everything, this is K beta sharp with H alpha. That is K beta sharp with, what was H alpha? It was two alpha sharp over K alpha alpha. Uh, and so let's just bring the two over K alpha alpha outside. And then I have K beta sharp alpha sharp. That is K beta alpha. Right, so um, this should be a dual. Remember, k dual of alpha beta is by definition k of alpha sharp beta sharp. That's how we define the dual of the killing form. Okay, so we're claiming this quantity is an integer. Now, in Euclidean geometry, if I give you a vector alpha 
and a vector beta. And I tell you to project orthogonally onto alpha. So this is the vector we're interested in. This is P alpha beta. What you get is, um, well, first let's conv convert alpha into a unit vector, alpha over length of alpha. Let's dot it with beta to get the alpha component of beta. And then we take that many copies of alpha over norm alpha. In other words, what we're doing is alpha dot beta over alpha dot alpha. And that's what we've got here, right? The killing form is our dot product here. So this is k alpha beta over k alpha alpha. And what we're saying is two times that is an integer. So this says two times p alpha beta um, is an integer multiple of alpha. Oh, sorry, there should be an alpha outside all this. So then that, that proves two, where we take n beta alpha to be this integer multiple, which is uh, two k alpha beta over k alpha alpha. Okay, so that's showing that we have this nice property that any root will project orthogonally to a half integer multiple of any other root. Now we just need to prove four that the only roots on the line through alpha are plus or minus alpha. Well, let's go down and get some space. Um, so we're going to prove four. Let's pick um, one of our roots and let's just rotate so that it's on the horizontal axis. So here's zero. Uh, here's beta. And let's suppose that on this line we have more than one root. And let's take alpha to be the root that's closest to the origin on one or other side of the origin, doesn't matter which. So what we've just proved is that uh, beta is a half integer multiple of alpha. And we also proved that alpha is a half integer multiple of beta, right? That's true for any root. But, you know, the only integer that's between 0 and 1 is... Sorry, the only half integer between 0 and 1 is a half. So that tells us, because alpha is closer to the origin, that alpha is a half beta. Unless it's actually equal to beta, but we're interested in the case where there's you know, multiple roots on this line. So alpha would be a half beta and beta would be to alpha. So with that in mind, let's move alpha so that it is actually halfway. We also have minus alpha and, and minus beta. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, take the representation of SL2C, namely the S alpha um, SL2C subalgebra given by just summing the root spaces on this line. So G minus beta plus G minus alpha plus, well, I don't take the whole root space. I just take the span of H alpha and then G alpha and G beta. This is a representation of SL2C. We, we know all these root spaces are one dimensional, so all these guys are one dimensional. So this root diagram is just the root diagram of SIM 4C2. So by our classification of SL2C representations, that's what this representation is. However, X, which lives in G alpha, acts on G alpha trivially because, you know, X generates G alpha as a vector space. So X, let me say add X of X is zero. So just, 
In other words, if if you look at the um, the action of SL2C on this representation, x is translating to the right, but then it's it's actually zero at this point, going from this root space to sorry this weight space to this weight space. The map is just zero. But that's not true for SIM4C2. If you calculate what happens for SIM4C2 and how x acts on this uh, weight space, it doesn't act as zero. So that's a contradiction. So that means there can't be more than one weight um, on this line, unless, of course, you're alpha and minus alpha. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take root systems as the basic thing and try and classify them. And that will give us a classification of the possible root systems of Lie algebras uh, of compact semi-simple groups. And that will be enough to classify those Lie algebras up to isomorphism.